This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today we will be discussing the second phase of metastasis that is the vascular dissemination, homing of the tumor cells and the colonization. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the first phase of the metastasis that was the invasion of metastasis, sorry, invasion of the extracellular matrix and the steps involved in this. So, uh, after the tumor cells, when they enter into the circulation, so they are, you can say they are prone to many destruction mechanisms like the many stress mechanisms like the innate immune system the adaptive immune system so the tumor cells they are prone to the destructive mechanisms so in order to cope with this condition in order to prevent the destructive mechanism the tumor cells they adhere to each other that is called as the homotypic interaction homotypic interaction means that the tumor cells they interact or they join together with each other clear and these tumor cells they also interact with the another type of the cells that are the blood cells so the tumor cells they also join to the blood cells that is called as the heterotypic interaction and blood cells most commonly the blood cells that are involved are the platelets means that the tumor cells they join with each other as well as they join with the platelets. So the tumor cell platelet interaction that increase the survival of this tumor cells. Now the tumor cells they also activates and they also bind to the coagulation cascades. Clear? They also binds to the coagulation cascade or coagulation you can say factors. Now after this binding to the coagulation factor they form the emboli and then this emboli it invades the endothelium of you can say it invades the basement membrane of the endothelium vascular endothelium clear in this way the tumor cells then they invade the endothelium of the basement membrane clear <coughs> basement membrane of the endothelium so now uh, after this invasion what happens now there is a adhesion molecule that is the CD44. CD44 adhesion molecule or the receptor, it is normally expressed by the T lymphocytes. And this CD44, it helps the T lymphocytes to migrate to the distant sites. They helps in the migration of the T lymphocytes. Clear? And how they migrate? Basically, these T, uh, CD4, uh, CD44 adhesion molecule or the receptor, it binds with the hyaluronate. It binds with the hyaluronate which is present on the endothelium of the venules. Clear? So, basic main important thing is that, that this CD44, it helps in the migration of the T lymphocytes so the different sites in the lymphoid follicles now in the same way what happens that this CD44 is also expressed by the tumor cells and this this CD44 in the tumor cells it helps in the metastasis at the different sites clear so that's why the tumor cells they also express the CD44 which is normally expressed by T lymphocytes and helps in the migration so that's why the, tu uh, the tumor cells as they also have to migrate so they express the CD44 clear to ha which helps them to the migration to the different metastatic sites now <clears throat> as I told you that uh, the means uh, the means the tumor cells they invade the basement membrane so what happens that this basement membrane is invaded at the secondary sites means that this is your primary site this was your vessel this vessel it moves towards the secondary site means I am telling you that the invasion of basement membrane here it occurs here it occurs but now we are we are talking about the secondary deposits so now the tumor cell has reached here and now this is the breaching of basement membrane now the tumor cell it breached the this vascular basement membrane and now it invades and it moves towards the secondary side so important thing here to be uh, here to be discussed that the secondary site or secondary deposits they are dependent upon the anatomic site of the primary tumor and the vessels draining that primary tumor 
clear simple is that i am trying to explain you here for suppose we have this primary tumor this is your basement membrane and here is interstitial fluid uh, interstitial connective tissue and this is your vessel clear now this is your tumor cell they means they become separated from each other they breach the basement membrane they cross the interstitial connective tissue and they also breach the basement membrane of the vessel now they have become enter into the circulation they are moving into the circulation so important thing that i am telling you that the secondary deposit it depends upon now after traveling and after it becomes here secondary it is deposited so this deposition it is dependent upon the anatomic side of the primary tumor this is primary means that the anatomic side of the primary tumor and the vessel draining that primary tumor means if it is entering this vessel so this vessel will be taking it towards which area it depends upon that vessel clear so for suppose this vessel is taking towards the bone so here it will be secondary deposit will be in the bone clear so the secondary deposit depends upon the primary uh, anatomic side of the primary tumor and the vessel draining that primary tumor is that clear now <clears throat> what happens that the most common metastatic site mostly what happens that mostly the metastatic sites are the first capillary bed involved means you can say this is your primary tumor and this is your first capillary bed that is involved in this area so the metastasis occur through this capillary bed most of the times but this is not always always there are certain exceptions so what are those exceptions i am telling you so the exceptions are remember this thing prostatic carcinoma this prostatic carcinoma it is spreads to the bone clear then we have the bronchogenic carcinoma this bronchogenic carcinoma it, exp uh, it it means it is metastasized towards the adrenals and brain then we have the neuroblastoma these are the examples clear neuroblastoma that is metastasizing towards the bone and the liver so i told you that most of the times the first capillary bed that is involved it is the site of the metastasis but it does not occur almost all of the time these are certain exceptions that the prostatic carcinoma it is moving towards the bone bronchogenic is moving toward adrenals and the brain neuroblastoma is moving towards the bone and the liver and you can also say the breast carcinoma it also moves towards the bone clear so what is the mechanism behind these that why the prostatic carcinoma is moving towards the bone why this is moving toward or metastasizing towards these areas these are very distinct sites so why this occur there are certain mechanisms what happens that the tumor cells they have the receptor clear and those receptor having the means you can say the ligand of those receptor is expressed on this on that organ on the metastatic uh, organ clear for suppose this is your tumor cell and this is the type of the receptor that is present on this tumor cell clear and uh, example for suppose we have the bone here clear we have the suppose this is the bone and this bone it express the ligand for this receptor this is the ligand that's why the tumor cell is attracting towards the bone means that's why the prostatic carcinoma for example this is prostatic carcinoma the tumor cell of the prostatic carcinoma that do that's why means the this is the ligand and this is the receptor so this is the reason that's why this prostatic carcinoma is metastasizing towards the bone because that bone is expressing the ligand uh, whose receptor is present on that tumor cell which is present in the prostate that's why it is attracted the second thing that why this is attracted because there are certain chemokines that are produced cytokines that are produced and they are attracting towards the bone so these are the this is the reason that's why the prostatic carcinoma towards the bone bronchogenic towards these and the neuroblastoma towards the bone and the liver 
why once again i'm telling that this is due to the means there are certain receptors that are present on the tumor cells and their ligands they are expressed on that metastatic organ clear so this is now uh, there are certain sites that are very rare for the metastasis clear so remember this also that there are rare metastatic sites rare metastatic sites what are those rare metastatic sites one is your skeletal muscle clear one is your skeletal muscle and the second one is your spleen so remember this that these are the rare sites of the metastasis number one is the skeletal muscle and number second one is the spleen <coughs> is that clear up till now if you have any confusion so you can ask me clear so now moving on towards the one thing more i have to tell you that what is the mechanism of the colonization clear what is the mechanism of colonization we are discussing the mechanism of colonization now basically what happens that the tumor cells they produce certain cytokines they produce certain chemokines certain growth factors and all that factors and those factors they act on the metastatic organ or uh, you can say metastatic organ and convert that organ into the you can say convert them into uh, means you can say it become habitual for the tumor cells means that uh, for example the tumor cell they have to move towards the bone so the tumor cell will be producing certain cytokines and certain chemokines that will be acting on the bone and converting the bone uh, to uh, means converting the bone into such uh, you can say converting bone into the you can say it becomes bone become habitual for the tumor cells means the tumor cells can easily uh, means you can say home there can easily spread there and can easily uh, you can say live there simply clear so what happens i am giving you an example for this so can you can understand easily first of all <clears throat> is for example we have the breast carcinoma breast carcinoma is spread to the bone and this breast carcinoma is osteolytic clear breast carcinoma is osteolytic means it destroy the bone and why it is osteolytic because this in the breast carcinoma it activates the osteoclast cells it activates the osteoclast cells now how this occur basically the breast cancer cells they express a protein that is called as the parathyroid hormone related protein clear this is a protein that is expressed by the breast uh, cancer cells clear and this it activates the osteo blast cell osteoblast cell and these osteoblast cell then produces rank l clear now this is a ligand rank ligand this ligand basically it stimulates the osteoclast cell clear breast cancer cell they produces a, a protein that is called as a parathyroid hormone related protein this protein it stimulates the osteoblast cell to produce the rank ligand rank l and this rank ligand it stimulates the osteoclast cell this osteoclast cells they destroy the bone clear and after destruction of the bone matrix there are certain growth factors that are released clear so in this way the tumor cells they make the metastatic site habitual for themselves habitual means that they uh, you can say they can easily live there clear so uh, with this we have completed our second phase of the metastatic cascade and you can say we have completed our seventh hallmark of the cancer clear so <clears throat> this is all about this uh, second uh, seventh hallmark of the cancer and if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz